A growth mindset is the biggest key to success in life. If you look at the most successful people in their field, Elon Musk, Mr. Beast, Jeff Bezos, Alex Ramosi, just to get us started, all of them are prime users of a growth mindset. In eight graphs that I'm about to present, I'll break down how it works and how you can achieve one yourself. Make sure to watch until the end and subscribe because the last graph is where everything comes together and how you can apply it into your own life and achieve the results that people dream of. Here is the first graph, and it's going to be the first of several, and you can really see the power, especially when you combine it with the ones that follow. It is fairly basic. Right here, you'll see time on the x-axis value, and on the y-axis, you'll see the effects of a growth mindset and a short-term mindset. I talk a lot about this on my channel, a long-term mindset versus a short-term mindset. A short-term mindset, you're thinking about short-term pleasures, and in the long-term mindset is where you fall in love with the growth. You get the dopamine release from the growth, and you're focused on long-term results. And these are two different mindsets that you can shift between, but really the effects of these compound over time and lead to drastically different results. So by the time you're 30, as you see here, the effects of having a long-term mindset up until that point are so huge compared with having a short-term mindset. A study found that success, which is obviously a subjective metric, but it found that it was 94% more likely with a growth mindset. And I owe all of my success thanks to this graph. So let's break it down. By the time you're 30, a diet that's been bad for you will lead to very bad results. You're probably going to be overweight. If you haven't had a habit of reading and growing in the mind, you're probably not going to be very smart. And if you haven't focused on growing wealth, you might be broke or in debt. If you've been living in the moment and spending your money, you aren't going to have much money saved and much power in what you can do with it. If you haven't put in much effort into your job or your career or your business, you probably are going to be in a pretty lowly position. Whereas if you've adopted a long-term mindset, you're going to see that start to build up over time. And by the time you're 30, you're going to have a ripped and peak physique in the peak years of your life. You're going to be smart and you're going to be in a position to succeed in all areas of life. And this is where we talk about the gap. The gap between people right here, it's huge. Like it's hard to have it first because there hasn't been enough time that goes past to really see it start to build yet. But if you start early and you start working, it's going to start to compound. And after it's been compounding for 10 years, the difference between you and the average guy, which I believe the average guy is actually below this line. And I'll talk about that in a second in another one of my graphs, but this can be huge. Someone who has had a short-term mindset versus someone who has a long-term mindset after 10 years, 20 years, it's going to be inverted. You see how this graph becomes exponential. I know I'll talk about why that is in a second. It's going to be huge. And so that is the power of adopting a growth mindset, falling in love with the process. The fact of the matter is it's not harder to have a growth mindset than a short-term one because you adapt to the baseline. It's something that you get used to. You get used to having a short-term pleasure around you. And after a while, it becomes the default. You become used to adopting a growth mindset. And after a while, it becomes default. You aren't thinking about it. So it doesn't require much discipline after a certain point in time because it all becomes habit. Now, do you want your habits to be good or bad? Yes, it takes more work in the short term, the first part. But as it progresses, it doesn't require any more discipline than the short-term mindset does because you build it up. And now this comes to the idea of day stacking. Now, another thing to keep in mind, as it is never too late to adopt a growth mindset, whether you're a teen, your 20s, your 30s, even your 50s, it's never too late to start working towards it. So don't let any of these numbers I'm saying throw you off. But this brings us to the idea of day stacking. This is the idea that your habits stack up day by day. And now I'm referring to chart number two. Right here, you can see that it's like a staircase. Day one, day two, day three, they start stacking up one day alone isn't going to be much results. You aren't going to notice it. But after a while, you look back and see where you came from. So really that graph that looked like a straight line is really like a zigzag. By days, you can stack up the days. As you go up the chart, you can add them up, but only while looking back as each day is nothing. It's like there's barely any increase day by day. But over time, when you think about it, there's 365 days in a year. Those days are going to compound every day. And this is what leads to those long-term results down the line. It's not an immediate impact. Getting big results takes time, but it's about chipping away at them slowly, which day stacking does. By stacking good habits, by stacking growth mindset practices, you're able to slowly make progress towards these big goals that provide you value as a person, build up big things and lead to feelings of fulfillment. But what's going to slow most people down is it's really not so much like this. There's actually a delayed effect in this graph. A real day stacking graph looks more like this one right here. There's a delayed effect between your efforts that you put in and the results you get. So for instance, your net worth is a lagging measure of your wealth. Your physique is a lagging measure of the effort that you put into the gym. There's going to be a period of time where you're going there and you aren't going to get the results right away. And it comes after a period of time after doing it a bunch, then you're going to start to get the results. And what's going to slow a lot of people down is this first part here. It's the hardest part about getting into a growth mindset. The hardest part is that first couple weeks because you aren't going to be seeing the results. There's a period of time where you're working and not seeing anything. When you start trying to make money online, there's a big learning phase where you aren't earning any money yet. It takes time for you to learn and put in the work before you start to see any results. But then once you see the results, that's what you fall in love with. You fall in love with getting the results and building your brain, building 
building your physique, building your value. And it takes a minute to get there. This is like that first graph here. I feel like there's a lot of people that say they hear all these great things that want to jump onto it, but they don't because there's this delayed effect. That's why it's hard. And it's another reason that people get caught up in short-term mindsets. Because the thing is, when you go over to graph number four here, you can flip this. This is the short-term mindset. This is the short-term gratification graph. Those short-term gratifications aren't going to hit you right away. I could eat some terrible food. I could stay out late and I could drink. And the next day, I wouldn't really notice that much change to my physique, but I would notice it a couple of days later. And at that point, it's already affected me. I can wake up and say, oh, my body's so resilient, but it's going to affect me just not right away. And that tricks a lot of people into thinking that the habits they picked up aren't super bad, but it's only after a while when it really hits them. And we can go back to that first graph here. It might not hit somebody that they're really falling deep into it until they're way deep down below this line, because it's really only going to start hurting when they get there. Both these graphs are exponential and it's exponential for growth mindset because it becomes baseline. Habits become default over time and they just become your baseline to hit. If there's a baseline that builds up, your new baseline becomes getting two hours of work done every day, going to the gym every day. And once you're used to that, you can keep stacking on to that. It doesn't become harder. It becomes easier because you become used to doing more and therefore doing more on top of that becomes easier after a period of time. And it's the same case for a short-term mindset. One short-term habit pulls you into more short-term habits. For a short-term mindset, not only is it harder to recover from, but it can drag you down. It's a whole gateway. It can be a system of gateway short-term pleasures, right? They're going to move further and further into it. It's going to be harder and harder to break out because just like I said with this first graph right here, just like it takes a minute to see the results, it takes a minute to see how much harm has been done. So by the time you get there, you could be a couple years down the line and that's going to take you a couple years to break out and even get to this baseline. And that's why it's dangerous when you flip this graph on and look at the short term. It's disincentivized to get started and it's also dangerous to follow that short term mindset. So I want to go back to this first graph and I want to add the line of success for something into it. And that is this line of success, as you can see added. And one of the things that a lot of the most successful people in my life have told me is they feel like they could lose everything and become successful again because it's not about the money in their bank account. It's about the knowledge and skills they've gained. And they feel like they could lose everything, restart and do it again. And we talk about the idea of luck. A lot of people agree that you can manufacture luck. Sure, it's about being in the right place and at the right time, but you need to be ready when you're in the right time and right place. There could be many right times or many right places. There's probably a lot of examples. Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Mr. Beast. Like Bill Gates might not have started Microsoft if he wasn't in the right place and time, but I'm very confident he would have been successful in whatever he put his mind to. Same with Elon Musk. He might not have been in the right place to start X.com and PayPal and everything that followed, but I feel like he would have been very successful in getting to where he put his mind to because that's the line of success right here. Once you get to a certain part on this line here, success becomes inevitable. And I'll pull up this other graph right here because this is one easy way to say. So let's just say you have a girlfriend. Once you get to a certain level of, I put attractive is here. Obviously there's other parts that come to getting girls and keeping them around. So I put in track in this, you get to a point in this line where you know, okay, I could lose this girl and get another one. Obviously it's not the same girl, but there's a lot of parts like that, but you could lose them and get another one. And you're confident in that ability because you've reached a certain level of attraction and those skills, right? So we can apply that same level to business, right? The line of success in business. Once you get to a certain level of knowledge or a certain level of knowing how to make money online, you can lose the money and lose that business, but you're confident you can get another one and you can start another one. That's the power of having a growth mindset. Once you grow those skills to a certain level, it's not about the exterior things you have. It's about the interior things that's going to bring the exterior things to you. The fact of the matter is, I think there's a huge fallacy that we look around and we see all these people living status quo lives and all these people who aren't successful. But the truth is they aren't successful because they're down in the second half of the graph. I'd say that the majority of people are below this black line. You see people that aren't successful and you say, oh, it's because it's so difficult, but it's really because they don't try. And if you try day after day and you day stack, I believe you get to the point where success becomes inevitable. And so I want to break this down a little bit more. You have this line of success on value and you can replace value with all sorts of different types of value. And whatever this line of success is in that area, in that different area of your life, a lot of success in business and a lot of success in happiness. And there's so many things you can replace both this Y axis with, but it's just a matter of putting in time, putting in that growth mindset. And after a certain point of time, you get there and we're going to go ahead and put the percentiles of guys right into this. The very, very top, you get the 99th percentile and at the very bottom, you get the 1%. And then you can fill in this graph with the other percentiles. And like I said, I think 75% of guys are below this black line. And I'm kind of talking about America, but let's just say it's 70% of guys are below this black line right here. And I'll also put some evidence to support that. And I think I'm being kind of generous and I'll dive into it a second. So when you think about, oh, I can apply a growth mindset immediately. If you have more of a growth mindset than a short-term mindset, you're automatically above 75% of the people around you. So let's just say you look around, you say so many people aren't successful. So many people are living lives of mediocrity. What if you eliminated that bottom 75% and now just look at the top 25%. I bet you find a lot of those people are successful. And as that time keeps stacking up, if you've been in a consistent long-term 
mindset for 10 years now. You're at 90%. Okay, let's look at 90% of people around you. Okay, well, yeah, that top 10%, they're pretty successful. That's what it's like. Like, I'm going to dive into the actual statistics in a second, but how many guys do you know around you that drink on a regular basis? That short-term mindset. How many guys do you know who eat whatever they want and don't follow a proper diet? How many guys do you know who don't go to the gym? How many guys do you know who don't read, who aren't focused on furthering their careers, who aren't focused on achieving their peak potential? How many guys do you know who use drugs or even nicotine? Now, nicotine, I say this all the time. This is what I mean about the connected nature of all the things in your life. Like a lot of guys I know have a nicotine stick and a nicotine stick is pretty much the definition of a short-term pleasure. You hit it and it releases nicotine, which releases dopamine in your brain. Pretty much the perfect example of a short-term pleasure. And a lot of guys I know will say, oh, there's no evidence that it's bad for me. There's no evidence that it causes any harm or cancer. But the big thing is it's a short-term pleasure in your life. And in my opinion, you can't have one short-term pleasure in your life and expect it's not going to influence the rest of your life, right? Your brain gets used to getting a short-term pleasure for it. It's also going to search for that short-term pleasure when it comes to food, right? When it comes to going out, it's going to search for all these short-term pleasures when it comes to playing video games and all other areas of your life. You can't keep that completely separated because it's in your brain. You've got parts of your brain that are dedicated towards short-term pleasures versus long-term pleasures. But this is what I mean by resetting your baseline too. By getting in the habit of doing long-term mindsets, you're going to physically grow that part of your brain and shrink that short-term part of it. That's why it becomes easier over time. You're physically altering your brain to like these short-term pleasures more than short ones. So if you're saying you're vaping and you're saying it does no harm because it's not related to anything in your life, you're at the very least, you're growing that short-term part of your brain to want more short-term pleasures. It's impossible to escape, right? Now, don't take this as never have short-term pleasures in your life. I think it is totally fine to treat yourself now and then, whether that's a meal, whether that's a movie, playing video games, of course, short-term pleasures are good. The balance is what's important. That balance should be heavily, heavily on the growth side of things. So I know I mentioned all this, but it's just crazy when you actually break it down and start to look at the data. Now, this data is for America too. Other countries might be a little different, but it was just the data that was easiest to get my hands on. I'm from the US and I know a lot of my audiences too. 36.5% of adults are obese and another 32.5% are overweight. That's crazy. That's 69% of Americans are obese or overweight. That means if you're not obese or overweight, you're ahead of 69% of the people around, basically 70%. You're in the top 30% of the country and you're just not obese or overweight. Okay, 23.2% of adults meet the physical activity guidelines for both aerobic and muscle strength and activity. Now that's crazy. And if you take a look to look at those standards, this is the most baseline stuff that I could hit these standards if I started at nothing and grinded at the gym for a week. That's how baseline these standards are. And you still have only one fifth of the country hitting them. Now that's crazy. Now here's something crazy. 98% of men reported repeated hub use in the past six months. And that's just a crazy, crazy number. 57% of adults have read less than five books in the last year. And I bet you that number is a little bit on the high end too. It's crazy. You shouldn't measure your knowledge you get by the number of books you've read in a year because it's about the amount of time you spent on books and other knowledge and not just about books as a number individually, but it shouldn't be that difficult to read five or six or seven books in a year. If I can think of an hour of free time that I'm doing playing video games or something and substitute it with reading a book, which is pretty chill time for me. And so I could be putting an hour a day and that'd be great. And if you spent that hour of time reading, you could do 50 books in a year compared to five which the average person reads. And that's consuming 10 times more knowledge than more than half the population. And if we look at the statistic again, 92% of the population reads less than 12 books a year. So you'd be in that very top percent of the country. Over 50% of adults get less than the recommended amount of sleep each night. Daily sleep deprivation raises your risk of all illnesses, raises your risk of all causes of death, lowers your recovery for growing muscle, increases your risk for obesity and diabetes. It lowers your intelligence and your cognitive thinking ability. The majority of the population on a daily basis isn't getting enough of it. These things I just named for you are so simple. This is like going to the gym, eating a good diet, getting enough sleep. It's so simple. We haven't even gotten to anything deep or complex. And if you make a habit of doing these things, you're probably ahead of about 75% of the population. And hard times create strong men and easy times create weak men. And it shows you like hard times create strong men, right? In today's day and age, you don't have natural hard times. Like we have an abundance of pretty much everything. There's very few people in the modern world, like the US living in actual hard times. So in order to push ourselves and create strong men out of that, you've got to create the hard times yourself. That's why if you have a majority of people slipping into that short-term mindset, because it doesn't matter, they'll survive. They'll be able to feel pleasure, but they won't be growing. That's why it's so easy to slip down that path. But that's also why it's so easy to achieve success. I think we can lower the line of success too. I think that line of success is too high. I think if you had a short-term mindset, I'm talking about success. Success is all perspective, right? What success for you might be doing something crazy and it might be higher in that line, right? You want to live a life that's more fulfilled than 90% of people. The line's wherever you make it, right? But here's the biggest truth of all. Having a growth mindset is just as easy as having a short-term one. When you're first starting out, it's tough because these short-term pleasures will pull you back into it. Video games, alcohol, fast food, drugs, nicotine. When you're in the moment and have to make that decision, whether to engage with these pleasures or work on building something bigger, it's tough to make because our minds are wired around getting that dopamine, that 
ancestrally wasn't available as too quickly. It's like hacking your biological system. But if you allow yourself to break out for a minute, start that growth mindset and start to get and hit some of your long-term goals, you realize that hitting these long-term goals feels so much better than these short-term pleasures. Once you're able to get past that first of the short-term pleasures calling you in without feeling the results of the long-term. Once you get there, you're in the clear. You can feel those long-term results impacting you way more. The other thing is effort compounds over time. The first part is hard because you're going from a short-term mindset to a growth mindset. And it's a hard transition because it feels like more work at first. The first part of any change is messy. But once you start compounding that effort day by day by day, by day 100 or day 1000, that effort just feels normal. It's not hard anymore. The hedonic treadmill of life says that we get used to anything over time. So imagine getting used to putting in effort and growth every day instead of getting used to short-term pleasures. And again, please don't take this video as me advocating never treat yourself, never engage in some short-term fun from time to time, but it should never take away from your ability to live a growth mindset. So yeah, that's the effects of a short-term mindset. I hope these graphs were able to help you. I put a lot of work in this video. If you want more like this, make sure to subscribe and comment, and I will see you guys next time.